Hey everyone, it's Kenny. Today, I want to talk to you about a fascinating topic from Chinese history, the Huang Chao Rebellion. Now, you might be thinking, what in the world is the Huang Chao Rebellion? Well, let me tell you, it's a pretty big deal. This rebellion, which took place in the late Tang Dynasty, had a massive impact on Chinese history, ultimately leading to the downfall of the Tang Dynasty and changing the course of Chinese history forever. You see, the Tang Dynasty was known for its wealth, power, and cultural achievements. But the Huang Chao rebellion changed all that. It was a massive uprising that originated in the south and quickly spread throughout the country, attacking cities and towns and causing chaos and destruction wherever it went. The rebellion was led by a man named Huang Chao, but the rebellion destroyed the society and economy, dealing a severe blow to the dynasty's rule. So, you can see why the Huang Chao Rebellion is such an important event in Chinese history. It marked the end of the Tang Dynasty and ushered in a period of political instability and chaos. So, let's dive into the fascinating world of the Huang Chao Rebellion and explore the impact it had on Chinese history. Are you ready? Let's go! Once upon a time, in the late Tang Dynasty, there was a man named Huang Chao. He was from the Chaozhu region, which is a region in now Shandong province, and he started his career as a salt smuggler. But he soon became a rebel leader and declared himself emperor of a new dynasty called Dajai, with the reign title of Jin Tong. This marked the climax of what we now call the Huang Chao Rebellion. Huang Chao's rebellion was one of the biggest and most devastating uprisings in Chinese history. It lasted for almost 10 years, from 875 to 880 and spread throughout much of China, causing countless deaths and leading to the downfall of the Tang Dynasty. Huang Chao was a skilled strategist and military leader. Huang Chao was driven by his deep hatred of the Tang regime, which he saw as corrupt and unjust. He had a loyal following of soldiers and supporters, many of whom were also disillusioned with the Tang government. They launched a series of attacks on Tang officials and institutions, seizing control of cities and provinces along the way. One of the most notorious incidents of the rebellion was the massacre of Hu merchants in Suanju in 878. Huang Chao's soldiers killed thousands of people, mostly Hu merchants who were seen as collaborators with the Tang regime. This was just one of many atrocities committed by Huang Chao and his followers during their campaign. In 881, Huang Chao's army finally captured the Tang capital of Chang'an, and he declared himself emperor. He quickly established a new government and began implementing sweeping reforms, including the confiscation of wealth from the rich and powerful. However, his rule was short-lived. In 882, the Tang Dynasty launched a counterattack, led by the General Zhu Wen. They defeated Huang Chao's forces in a decisive battle, and many of his followers defected or were captured. It is said that Huang Chao himself was killed in 884, either by one of his own men or by enemy forces. Although Huang Chao's rebellion ultimately failed, it had a profound impact on Chinese history. The Tang Dynasty never fully recovered from the damage inflicted by the uprising, and it paved the way for the rise of new powers and dynasties in China. China's ancient era. Today, Wang Chao is remembered as a complex and controversial figure. Some view him as a hero who fought against a corrupt regime, while others see him as a bloodthirsty rebel who caused immense suffering and destruction. But regardless of one's perspective, there is no denying the lasting impact of the Wang Chao rebellion on Chinese history and culture. Now, let's talk about the infamous Huang Chao Rebellion and how it brought the Tang Dynasty to its knees. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, wasn't it the An Lok Shan Rebellion that almost destroyed the Tang Dynasty? Well, yes and no. While the An Lok Shan Rebellion was certainly a major blow to the Tang regime, it managed to survive for over a century after that. It wasn't until the Huang Chao Rebellion came along that the Tang Dynasty finally met its end. So, what was so devastating about the Huang Chao Rebellion? For starters, it hit the Tang government where it hurt the most, its core regions. See, the Tang Dynasty was centered around the Guangzhou region, and after the An Lok Shan Rebellion, it relied heavily on the Southeast region for support and resources. And guess where Huang Chao and his rebels decided to wreak havoc? You guessed it, the Guangzhou and Southeast regions. Wang Chao and his army didn't just camp out in one place like your average rebel force. No, they were on the move, pillaging and plundering as they went. They had no fixed base of operations, which made them difficult to track down and defeat. But it also meant that they had to constantly scavenge for resources to keep their massive army fed and clothed 
and boy, did they scavenge. Wang Chao's army was like a swarm of locusts, leaving destruction and ruin in their wake. They raided and looted towns and villages, taking whatever they could get their hands on. And it wasn't just food and supplies they were after, they also targeted wealthy merchants and officials, killing and extorting them for money and valuables. Eventually, Wang Chao and his rebels made their way to Chang'an, the Tang capital. They besieged the city, and after a long and bloody battle, they managed to breach the walls and capture the city. The Tang Emperor fled, and Wang Chao declared himself the new ruler of China. But as we all know, Huang Chao's reign was short-lived. The Tang Dynasty rallied its forces and launched a counterattack, led by none other than Zhu Wen, who had been a member of Huang Chao's army before defecting to the Tang side. In the end, Huang Chao was defeated, and although some rebels continued to fight on, the rebellion as a whole had been crushed. But the damage had been done. The Wang Chao Rebellion had caused widespread destruction and chaos throughout the Tang Dynasty, and it had shattered the government's ability to maintain control over its core regions. With its resources depleted and its power base weakened, the Tang Dynasty was left vulnerable to attack from other warlords and factions. Also, let's take a look at how the Huang Chao Rebellion upset the delicate balance between the central government and the Fanjin, leading to the downfall of the Tang Dynasty. As we've discussed before, the Huang Chao Rebellion caused widespread destruction and chaos throughout the Tang Dynasty, but it also had a profound impact on the power structure of the empire. Prior to the rebellion, the Tang government had been able to maintain a balance of power between the central government and the regional warlords, or Fanjin, by playing them off against each other. However, the the Wang Chao Rebellion shattered this balance. One of the most significant effects of the rebellion was the devastating loss of the Tang Dynasty's central army, the Shen Chat Army, which had been the only force the government could rely on to maintain control over the Fanjin. The Shen Chat Army had been severely depleted during the rebellion, and when the Northern Kitten invaded, the Tang Emperor made a fatal mistake and sent the remaining Shen Chat soldiers to fight, leaving the central government without any real military power. As a result, the Fanjin were able to grow in power and influence, with some even expanding their territory and armies at the expense of weaker Fanjin. The Tang government became increasingly reliant on these Fanjin for support, and in many cases, the Fanjin became de facto rulers of their territories, with the central government reduced to the role of a puppet regime. This situation was exacerbated by the rise of powerful Fanjin like Zhu Wen, who had been a member of Huang Chao's army before defecting to the Tang side. These Fanjin were able to build up their power bases and challenge the authority of the central government, eventually leading to a prolonged period of conflict and instability. Meanwhile, the Tang government's ability to control the provinces was also weakened. Although the Emperor Xinzong had tried to strengthen the power of local officials, the rebellion and subsequent loss of central authority allowed the provincial governors and officials to become increasingly independent and autonomous. This trend continued after the rebellion was suppressed, with the Tang government unable to regain its former control over the provinces. In the end, the Wang Chao Rebellion was a major factor in the downfall of the Tang Dynasty. By disrupting the delicate balance of power between the central government and the Fanjin. It set in motion a chain of events that ultimately led to the fracturing of the empire and the rise of powerful Fanjin who challenged the authority of the central government. Although the Tang Dynasty was able to survive for several more decades after the rebellion, it was never able to fully recover from the damage that had been done. Now, I am going to talk about how the Huang Chao Rebellion ultimately led to the downfall of the Tang Dynasty by disrupting the southern economy that the dynasty relied on. Since the An Lok Shan Rebellion, the Tang Dynasty's financial income had been relying heavily on the two major tax supply regions in the south, especially in the Jinghuai area. Jingnan had become the financial and economic center of the country. After the An Lok Shan Rebellion, the rise of the Jingnan economy became a necessary choice for maintaining the rule. After the implementation of the two tax law, the Tang Dynasty's tax revenue mainly relied on the eight Jingnan provinces, which provided 1.4 million households, accounting for one fourth of the total tax revenue. The rise of the Jingnan economy was closely related to the prosperity of agriculture in the region. During the Tang Dynasty, the construction of water conservancy facilities in Jingnan had overcome the greatest limiting factor of agricultural development. The development of agricultural tools such as curved plows, water field rakes, and hose 
Zhao's made farming easier. The development of agriculture and handicrafts in Jingnan promoted the development of commerce. After the opening of the Grand Canal, the prosperous Yangzhou became a hub of transportation. However, the Wangchao Rebellion attacked Guangzhou, severely damaging the southern economy and cutting off the economic lifeline of the Grand Canal. This dealt a heavy blow to the Tang Dynasty's rule. The southern economy that supported the dynasty's financial revenue had been disrupted, leading to the dynasty's ultimate downfall. Well, that's it for today's video on the Huang Chao Rebellion. I hope you all learned something new and interesting about this pivotal event in Chinese history. But before you go, I want to ask you a favor. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and giving this video a like. Your support means a lot to me and it motivates me to keep creating more content for you to enjoy. Also, if you have any suggestions or requests for future videos, please leave a comment and let me know. I love hearing from my viewers and I'm always looking for new and exciting topics to explore. Once again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.